So here are five DIY hacks that will upgrade any tow tower system. And we're gonna build this thing. So there's that. Functional and stylish, coming in three, two, one. Let's go. Why is it that when it comes to storage solutions that we oftentimes find ourselves sacrificing style in the name of function? Well, I, like Tony Stark, would like to believe that, hey, is it too much to ask for both? So for those of you that are actually looking at building some sort of a storage system, whether that be garage shelves, your shop storage, tote bins, however you want to phrase it, something that's going to allow you to store totes, I want to ask you, how many times have you thought, Gosh, I don't just want the normal standard tote bins that are out there. Now there's plenty of videos that are out there that are looking at simply just um, a lot of the floating bins and they're functional as can be, but I wanted to add some style to it. So for me, as you've heard me say before in my shop, I've got a shop that I believe to be aesthetically pleasing to look at and I love spending time out here because not only is it my shop, but it's my man cave. So I like to combine both things. From this perspective, there are a couple of needs I had when I first started looking at building this. One is I wanted dimension, right? My shop is a 12 foot ceiling and I wanted to add some dimension. Why? Because again, my usage line, everything goes up to roughly eight feet. So from that perspective, I wanted to add dimension. So I wanted to go ceiling to floor. The other thing is I wanted to add some style. And if you look at a lot of the modern home builds, you'll see that they oftentimes are having an accent wall. So for me, I wanted to add an accent style to this storage solution. So what you're gonna see as I'm doing the build is actually painting the wall behind it. You'll see that it's that dark gray and we'll go through that as well as painting the shelf system itself rather than keeping it in that venerated pine look <laughs> we actually went ahead and we uh painted it and then we put it up there so that it has a style in and of itself creating this accent like wall feature i present to you guys my tote storage system that doesn't sacrifice style in the name of function but rather fuses the two together and what i feel to be pretty darn good Hey guys, before we proceed further, I wanted to backtrack just a little bit. Why? I want to give you guys just a clearer picture of the project's beginnings. When I first acquired the property, I remember the shop was in complete chaos. So initially I actually focused a lot of my revamping on like the concrete and the walls, but now we progress to installing the drywall. You can actually see here, I'm adding a fresh coat of mud as well as applying paint but this in this particular case it was just your normal generic paint that i used on the rest of the um, shop just because i hadn't figured out what i wanted to do with this corner as of right now initially while envisioning the grand project i earmarked the southeast corner for the tv lounge area and i planned for my work table to be in the center surrounded by my custom built cabinets on the north side however this corner that northeast corner that you guys see this corner remained honestly purposeless almost initially so for me i put my tables there and this is where i operated and kept all of my tools until i kind of figured it out but for me guys, it was only after completing the rest of the shop that I realized I needed additional storage. And really this is what prompted me um, to complete this tower in this space. So with this next portion, I don't actually have any video footage, but I do have a few pictures that I love to kind of take you through. And with this tower, what I actually started off doing is by using some two by sixes against the wall. And you can actually see the two different leg screws that I used to fasten it and secure it, as well as then extend it all the way around to the left or that north wall there that's with the lighter color. And then I just kind of built out my frame from there. And then you can kind of see on the right side we've got that two by six that's going straight up to the ceiling and if you look at choice one versus choice two i really had thought about doing choice one leaving that left side off almost as if like a stylish expression of what i wanted to do but the honest truth is at the end of the day i felt like number two actually looked 
aesthetically better and it didn't really matter from a support uh, standpoint just because I had so much fasteners and lag screws going straight into the studs. So in a sense they already had their support it was just indwelling within the wall. And so as we kind of continue to progress guys you can see the final product here. The one thing I realized the moment that I went to remove my first tote and it was painful honestly is that this is great i can i can easily remove both but i can't remove just one when i did the original dimensions this fits fine this has a little bit of a gap but what i failed to compensate for is that this tote recesses into the top of this tote giving it that stackability but my extra here is not enough to compensate for the depth that I need to be able to lift this up and out. Subsequently, I have to, in order to get to this one or this one, I have to remove both of the totes to get them out. So today what you're gonna notice is that we're gonna take care of that. How are we gonna take care of that? Well, I've built out of these uh, three quarter inch maple veneer uh, plywood, I've built an L bracket like formation that's glued and screwed. And then I also developed this I-beam, if you will. Now, you notice one side is not painted because that's obviously gonna go up against the top, so I didn't wanna um, waste the paint. But here's how that's gonna work, right? One's gonna go on the outside, one's gonna go on the, on the middle to create that, so that that top one will be just like this in a bracket, creating that floating bin style mechanism. But what I'm gonna do a little bit different is, one, I like the idea of having the shelves. Why? Because if I ever change my mind with the function, what I want up there, I might, and I've even thought about this, I might actually even put a refrigerator out here to where I might do that on one, obviously this shelf, well, then I can do that. If I do my floating bins, the um, it's really only got one purpose. And I know that that's the purpose it was designed for, so that's great, there's nothing wrong with that. But I just thought for myself, if I wanna add some variety later on, or if I'm trying to think ahead, right? I always love that quote, do something today that your future self will thank you for. And if I change my mind and how I want this used, I'm hoping that my future self will thank me that I added shelves so we can do something a little bit different. So the plan for today is to add the L brackets on the side, and then add the I-beams coming here, for all of the outer um, columns. And I'm gonna be switching out to these 14 gallon totes. These are the HDX, almost these are the exact same shape of this. So, however, they're just not as deep. If you look at this, if I try to compare it, that's gonna gain me about four inches, which is honestly gonna be perfect. And the tote isn't quite as big, therefore you won't have as much weight putting down and putting a ton of stress on the outer wings to kind of hold it up, if you will. So that's the journey you're signing up for today. So let's go ahead and get started. Thanks guys for hanging out. And again, if you're liking the content, please do me a favor, give me a like. Let's go. So when we take a look at what we're gonna be designing here today is we got our L brackets up top and right next to that on the right is the I beams. And just below that is the individual quantity count that we're gonna be needing. So let's go ahead and get started with cutting that now. You can see these L beams that are going to be going on the outside, if you will. But in the middle, it's got to be able to receive it on both sides, if you will, 
um, two L brackets. So how I'm gonna be doing that, instead of making another L bracket, I'm actually gonna be creating um, these I-beams. So what I'm doing is I'm marking those, and then that'll have the two and a half inch in between, and it just have it that if you look at this width, there's exactly an inch on either side, just like those L brackets. And so then that'll give me the, the, the top plate um, to kind of screw in for. And the full thickness of all of this is going to equal, same as this, if you look at that, this is flush all the way, ac all the way across the top. So I did that obviously on purpose so that the totes are level, but also that the, these two compensate so that the exact same level and height. So this is how that's gonna go. So really all I'm, I'm doing now is I'm taking these uh, two and three quarter inch boards and I'm marking down the center to kind of create. So when I do my glue up later, I know how it goes. So what I'm doing is I'm using my Polini pocket rule and I'm just kind of marking this here. to give me just my references on both sides. So if you will, as I'm doing that, then I know that this is exactly where my um, one and, uh, what was it, one and three quarters will end up going. So I'm gonna mark all those now. Okay, so let me just give you a uh, demonstration on how we're gonna do those I-beams. So as you can see what I did before with the pocket plenty rules, I did the inch on either side, right? Center representing where um, this vertical piece is gonna be doing. So let me take this glue bot and donate some glue. Spread it out with my God-given glue spreader. All right, so I got that right there. Let's set this up. The way I've been doing it for these is I just kind of line it up. So this makes it a lot easier for me to line this up. And then I'm just gonna kind of start with that first one. There we go. All right, I got my counter sink. And I'm just using an uh, inch and a quarter black phosphate screws, kind of coarse thread, obviously with the soft rotate it around then I get to line up the top one and again you maybe maybe can or cannot see but you can still see where those outlines are and that just makes it honestly really easy for me to reference this so let's do this upper one which you probably can't see on the camera right now so I start with getting the the two set the, the two ends done and then for me I'm gonna take my little um, delb square and I'll mark that center just to give me a super quick reference. And then that just allows me to go and I'm just gonna... Do one on either end. And I can cinch these down so that, to allow the glue. Uh, the glue, glue to cure overnight. Before I get back on these, I'll uh, sand them and paint them. And just like for me with caulking, I'll take any of that excess. I know some people would use a straw to kind of collect that, but I'm actually making sure that that's all good. All right, so now let's do the last one. So we take the other part of the I-beam. Just like that, and I'm gonna spread that again. Hit any spots that didn't get it. All right, we're gonna line this up. This is good. Align this side up with the pencil mark. Right there. Just like. See those I beans, we'll let those cure overnight and then get them painted. Shazam!
Thank you, Lucas Bean. He actually made me this out of Manzanita from the Airsoft Land property for the Band of Brothers, autographed by Lucas himself. Oh, that's heavy. You know, one of the things I actually thought about doing was making a bunk bed up top there, putting a little bit of a rail on and having that if you ever want to take like a mid-afternoon siesta, you can. That's a someday project. Here's a little pro tip as Christmas is coming up. These counter sinks, Amana tools, I think sells it. These are, these are phenomenal. Um, so pick yourself up one of these. That's what I actually use to counter sink on here before we put them in, just to make sure I don't split the wood on this. And we're gonna go ahead and use, because I'm going three quarter inch plywood into three quarter inch, right? That's inch and a half. So I'm gonna be using an inch and a half, or excuse me, inch and a quarter black phosphate coarse screws to go in, which would be best. Obviously you wanna use coarse uh, screws whenever you're going into softwood. All right, that's solid. I'm gonna be using four playing cards as shims. I'm gonna set them at a slight angle. I'll stay there without any problems. That's just gonna give me just that little bit extra bit of play that I want. You guys can see I'm putting those cards in there. Put that in, and again, just to give me that extra little bit. Now remember, I measured the distance so that as long as I press them up, that's gonna be all that I need. Charlie, you bit my finger. All right, there you go. <clears throat> now, what I'll probably obviously end up doing you guys is, um, it's not just going to be those two. I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna add some more uh, screws uh, down the center. And I might actually even do one little cross beam between um, the under supports across to give the center position. Because as of right now, they're just screwed into the front and the very back. So I'm gonna add some additional bracing and I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through the rest of it so that you guys can just see the progression and we'll go from. crying out loud. What? No way. <laughs> that's awesome. That was an uncalculated blessing right there. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and finish up the rest of them. bins come up top. Man, that fits like a glove. Come on. Wow. Yep. That's all I got to say. Wow.
All right. So regarding the five hacks that we were talking about in the beginning, guys, keep in mind, one of the things you could do to add style is by taking the simple, notice this one's red. Most of the ones that you see at the Home Depot are the yellow, but keep in mind, that's only the base color. You can actually spray paint these to whatever color it is you're trying to do to actually match the rest of your shop, okay? So that's one. Now, don't forget, you can actually paint the wall behind like I showed you earlier. You can also paint the shelf itself to give it a lot of character. Also, notice these hooks that I kind of put on there. You can use them for your coats or whatever you need to, but those add just a tremendous amount of style as well as even putting a face board or something of that nature, okay? And you could do just this partial front. And the last thing I want to show you that's most important is this. Just as Thor has Mjolnir, every woodworker should have their secret weapon. So I want to show you mine. Not sure what this is? This is an absolutely must have. Check out this video and I'll show you what it is.